new poem today and the poem is caring for animals by john silkin this poem has a lot of contemporary significance because we face a lot of threats in fact climatic changes is one of the threats we face the modern world faces and besides that of course we have a lot of disasters right every year we we face uh, the problems caused by flood uh, we have sometimes drought we have landslides and hundreds of people sometimes maybe globally thousands of people just die because of all these environmental issues and we have to remember the names of uh, the uh, philosophers or the environmentalists environmentalists like uh, uh, Norwegian philosopher and uh, environmentalist Arne Nees, A R N E Nees, N A E S, Arne Nees, and the American uh, environmentalist, uh, environmentalist uh, George Sessions. So these two uh, environmentalists and uh, philosophers, uh, Arne Nees and George Sessions, developed a new uh, perspective or a new uh, environmental uh, movement or philosophy which is known as deep ecology and deep ecology has a lot of significance because deep ecology is a perspective or a philosophy which is insisting on the fact that every every organism maybe every uh, living as well as non-living thing in the uh, surroundings is important for a sustainable world. If we do not, of course, uh, uh, care for the uh, organisms, like uh, maybe we have, we don't care for people. Human beings have a perspective that we are the center of the universe, or we are the most significant uh, uh, organism. It is, of course. Uh, the world has been created, the universe has been created, the earth has been created for human beings, right? So this is a kind of perspective which is known as anthropocentric perspective, right? So um, against or the opposite of uh, the anthropocentric perspective is the very perspective we have in deep ecology, in which we believe that or the uh, philosophers like uh, Norwegian philosopher Arne Nees and American environmentalist George Sessions insist or uh, declare the fact that uh, human life is as just one of the many equal components of the global ecosystem. Okay, so human beings are important so too everything in the universe is important the plants the trees the butterflies the squirrels the cuckoo the deer the elephant so too the non-living things like uh, maybe the rock the hills the hillocks the rivers all right but now that we have the perspective of anthropocentric uh, uh, universe or anthropocentric earth we think that or other people uh, be behave or live a life as if everything is created for man and man is the uh, uh, superior or man can do anything he likes and uh, of course he can destroy the surroundings he can fell trees he can of course uh, just uh, make any number of dams construct dams construct buildings construct highways okay ha construct airports then uh, of course we we need power we need electricity and we we need energy for that of course we can have uh, maybe uh, nuclear energy for nuclear energy we have uh, certain reactors right so uh, for atomic energy again we have the reactors so everything is uh, just uh, done for the sake of development and uh, people believe that uh, 
maybe other organisms, uh, organisms other than human beings, animals, plants, etc., are not significant. The significance is just on human beings. That is the perspective of the anthropo anthropocentric perspective. And it has to be replaced by the perspective of deep ecology, right? Human beings are significant. So too, the plants, the animals and everything. We are just a, a, a part of this universe and everything around us is just like what Chief Seattle says, right? Or even like our Janet Armstrong, Janet Armstrong, we studied about uh, Janet Armstrong in the third semester, okay? So just like what Janet Armstrong says, just like what Chief Seattle says, everything is part of our life. Everything is part of the earth. Everything is part of the universe. And all right, the plants, the trees, the animals, the creatures, they are just the brothers and sisters of human beings. So if rivers, plants, animals, and everything around us, living and non-living, is our brothers and sisters, we should care for them. We should not be rude to them. We should not just uh, attack them, ambush them, just uh, destroy them. And when we destroy them, we destroy our own cradles of life. So many points have written about the significance of being uh, eco-friendly, uh, loving nature, being kind to the environment in every language. And of course, we have uh, the great points like uh, in Malayalam, of course, we have great points like Sugata Kumariyama, uh, or in Vikuru, all these writers, other writers also, right? But I just mentioned the most significant and famous writers like Oyam Vikuru. Uh, one of the poems of Oyam Vikuru, which is important, is Inium Marika Bumi. That poem is about the kind of atrocities that human beings just shower upon the environment. Similarly, Sukhita Kumari, many of her poems like Colossus, Colossus is a poem which is about the kind of violence and cruelty we have in the human history. Similarly, poems like Urubatu Pinayam, many uh, poem, uh, right, uh, Manava, uh, Manava Hridayam, many other poems, Sukhita Kumariyama. And we know that Sukhita Kumariyama uh, was a champion of uh, environmental issues, like she is just uh, involving in the a silent Wally project, right? Uh, she also joined uh, and Swick, Medha, Patkar and all. Anyway, today we discuss a very significant poem and that poem is by John Silkin. John Silkin has written the wonderful poem, Caring for Animals. And uh, this poem is just emphatically asserting the significance of being nice to animals. Animals are our brothers and sisters. They are part of the family of uh, the, the, the earth, right? We are all members of the same family. So let us be nice to them. So now let's just look at the biographical details of John Silkin. John Silkin was born on 2nd December, 1930 in a Jewish immigrant family in London. He attended Wycliffe College and Dulwich College. He was evacuated during the Second World War from London to Wales. You know about the Holocaust after the Second World War atrocities towards the Jews. And of course, John Silkin is of a Jewish background and ancestry, and hence is evacuated during the Second World War from London to Wales. In the 1950s, he struggled in such a way that for a living, he was doing manual labor, working hard in the uh, surroundings, like working as a coolie sometimes, manual labor, maybe working in the farm, working in construction field. So that is working. The, that's the kind of uh, misery and difficulty John Silkin had. 
He lived by teaching English as a foreign language at the St. Giles School of English in Oxford Street. Silkin's famous works include the portrait and other poems of 1950, the Peaceable Kingdom of 1954, the Two Freedoms of 1958, Living Voices of 1960, the Recording of the Stones of 1961, Nature with Man of 1965, and Waters Meet of 1994. So these are some of the significant anthologies. In most of these anthologies, we come across poems that show the necessity of being nice and eco, nice to the earth or the environment or being eco-friendly. Besides writing poems, he has edited anthologies, which include the Penguin Book of First World War Poetry, 1979. He became the editor of the literary magazine Stand, which he founded in 1952 and continued to edit the magazine until his death on 25th November 1997. He won the Faber Memorial Prize for Nature with Man and received four Gregory Fellowship from University of Leeds. This will of course help us understand the significance of John Silk wins the Faber Memorial Prize for Nature with Man. Okay, Nature with Man. So a poet who dedicates his life for uh, just uh, preaching the significance of being nice to nature. So he's given the Faber Memorial Prize for Nature with Man, and he's given four Gregory Fellowships uh, from the University of Leeds, right? That helps us understand the great contribution of this great writer, John Silkin. According to critics, Silkin's poems often focus on his Jewish identity, a sense of dislocation, and the divide between humankind and nature. So these are the three themes of the poetry of John Silkin, uh, just uh, a, a focus on Jewish identity. Jewish people are uh, uh, just uh, a minority. And soon after the Second World War, they were hunted by the Nazi regime. Thousands were killed and the identity as, as a Jew was often in trouble. And that uh, identity of the Jewish people is the theme of their, the trauma they faced, the trauma they face, and again, the difficulties, the conflicts, all, all that is one of the themes of the poetry of John Silkin. Besides, uh, a sense of dislocation, dislocation. Maybe I and you have uh, a feeling of location, like we are part of uh, maybe, right, a locale. We are part of Kerala. We are part of Korikot. Maybe we are part of uh, a particular geographical area. But these people, they feel dislocated. Where do I belong? Do I have a district of my own? Do I have a home of my own? Do I have a country of my own? Where do I belong? That is it, right? So these people, Jewish people, have a sense of dislocation. And that sense of dislocation is one of the themes of uh, the poetry of John Silkin. Besides, it's about the divide between humankind and nature. Okay, that is what I spoke in the beginning, like uh, people think that nature uh, and uh, human beings are different. Nature is not part of human being. Human being is superior. Human being is very important. And uh, uh, man can do anything. And uh, 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 developmental pro projects can be justified for, of course, uh, the fact that this is for human being. And no, th that is the anthropocentric perspective. That is the anthropocentric perspective, the perspective in which we believe that or the people believe that human beings are the, uh, the, 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 the uh, most significant species on earth and anything can be controlled or used for the development of man. And it has to change. John Silkin, along with the other uh, philosophers and environmentalists of uh, the deep ecology, environmental movement 
advocate the philosophy of deep, deep ecology that is human beings are or rather human life is as just one of uh, uh, many equal components of global ecosystem we have to care for the animals uh, care for the plants and uh, uh, of course the rivers and pools and lakes and uh, we must be very careful not to uh, 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 bombard on uh, the surrounding okay now let us just look at uh, the introduction to the very poem we discussed caring for animals in the second half of the 20th century there happened a paradigm shift in our perception of animals environmental movements created a sort of awareness against commodification of animals in the present world accordingly laws were framed to prevent the torturing and abuse of animals it is in this context of the inhuman treatment of the non-human that a new literature of animal rights emerged and this poem caring for animals of john silkin is an example uh, for literature of animal rights so we have animal poetry in Deuce. but here in john silkin we have literature of animal rights we speak about human rights so animals also have animal right animals also have rights and that is animal rights and this poem caring for animals is about animal rights the basic premise of such literature literature of animal rights was the understanding of both the human and the non-human forming an inseparable bond of life okay so there is an inseparable uh, 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 a, a relationship inseparable relationship between the human life and the animal life and uh, of course it cannot be separated animals are part of the life of the human beings john silkin's nature animal poems become important in this historical scenario maybe we we can say that this could be the reason why our great uh, uh, poets uh, said uh, they, they had a, a kind of a perspective in which they believe that uh, god dwells in everything and we say that uh, um, kallilum mullilum thoonilum thurumbilum devam irikkunu avan karunamayanai kaaval vilakkai karalil irikkunu okay so the the very concept of that is in uh, the poem or rather the very philosophy of john silkin caring for animals belongs to the collection the peaceable kingdom the peaceable kingdom the poet says that <clears throat> whenever he asks the sky and water about caring for animals he gets no answer john silken often asks the sky asks the ocean the water about caring for animals nobody cares for the animals all right he remembers dogs cats and horses and owls that have been badly injured and need first aid true often when i drive uh, i see a lot of uh, very very tormenting uh, tragic scene on the highway lot of organisms the frogs the chicken the cat the snakes the lizards all this is just brutally killed underneath the uh, the the, the wheels of uh, the vehicles that thousands of vehicles in our uh, roads highways right and a lot of creatures like uh, are being brutally uh, eliminated or killed on our roads not only in the roads right think of all the electric wires think of the very very a uh, uh, lot of uh, um, power projects all right so all like again we have of course right now the lot of uh, reactors right nuclear reactors we have and the kind of uh, uh, radiation 
that, that leads to the death of a lot of creatures, right? So if we, if we care for the animal world, if we care for the birds and bees and uh, the butterflies, of course, we must be very, very careful in uh, uh, implementing more the so-called developmental projects, okay? So John Silkin remembers dogs, cats, horses, and owls that have been badly injured and need first aid. He answers the question himself and says that caring for animals will make us realize that being human animals, we too are in need of love and care. We are human animals and there are animals. So we need love and care. How sad you are if your dad, mom, brother, sister, neighbor, friend do not love you. Similarly, animals also need love. We think that we, they, they do not need love, but they need love. They need emotional, psychological, spiritual, uh, again, of course, social, familial love and care. And we have to give that. In rather simple lyrics, instead of objectifying the animals, the poet raises our conscious, consciousness towards the bond that should generate love, kindness, and care for the animals. Until one has loved an animal, a part of one's soul remains unawakened, says the French poet Anatole France. Maybe if you have a pet at home, you will know how uh, uh, loving they are. I remember uh, years ago when uh, one of my pet, yeah, I had a Pomer Pomerian a pet dog and uh, uh, we used to call it Buck. And when one day, of course, uh, I, we, it, it, it just lived with us for more than 10 years. And uh, one day it uh, uh, passed away and uh, all of us were quite sad. You feel that you, you, you miss one of the members of the family. So the same concept is in the uh, words of uh, French poet Anatole France, who says that until one has loved an animal, a part of one's soul remains unawakened. So your soul is awakened only when you love animals. And this idea we have in the poem, uh, the ancient mariner of uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, one of uh, the uh, friends of uh, the great romantic poet Wordsworth. Uh, please read that poem, Ancient Mariner, in which, of course, uh, uh, Albatross Bird is uh, a, a very important character, right? Silkin, uh, in this poem, Caring for Animals, shows that love and care for animals is a necessary step to extend the boundaries of the human world. Now, let us just... Uh, uh, recite the poem, Caring for Animals. Please listen. I ask sometimes why these small animals with bitter eyes, why we should care for them. I question the sky, the serene blue water, but it cannot say, it gives no answer. And no answer releases in my head a procession of gray shades parched and whimpering. Dogs with clipped ears, wheezing cart horses, a fly without shadow and without thought. Is it with this menaces to our vision, with this procession led by a man carrying wood, we must be concerned? The holy land, the Raring green island should be kindlier than this. Yet the animals, our ghosts, need tending to. Take it, the whipped cat and the blinded owl. Take up the man trapped squirrel upon your shoulder. Attend to the unnecessary beasts from. Growing, growing mercy and a moderate love, great love for the human animal occurs. Look at the last lines. From growing mercy and a moderate love, great love for the human animal occurs. 
So John Silkin in, in, the, in the last lines of the poem confirms the fact that only if we are kind and, and, and love, loving and lovable to the animals, of course, there is love for human animal. If we don't love the animals, we do, we, we do not love uh, the human animal, right? Uh, if we say that we love our neighbor, if we say that we love human beings, we should love animals because otherwise our love is incomplete. So our love is complete. Our love is, uh, in fact, the kind of uh, ideal love only when we love animals. So let's ensure that we love animals. Look at the poem now. Let's go for a discussion. Caring for animals. I ask sometimes why these small animals with bitter eyes, why should we care for them? John Silkin asks the universe, asks the world, asks the earth, asks everybody, why these animals, small animals with bitter eyes, small animals with bitter eyes, small animals, it could be the cat, it could be the dog, it could be the horse, it could be the deer, it could be the birds, it could be all or any creature. So why these small animals with bitter eyes? What do you mean by bitter eyes? Bitter, the word means uh, harsh, intense, pain, sad experience, right? So why, why do these animals have bitter eyes? Because these animals are being uh, attacked. They do not have a comfortable uh, background, ecosystem, surrounding. And okay, these, these animals suffer. So why should we care for them? John Silkin asks, yeah, these animals with bitter eyes, why should we care for them? Deep in the heart of John Silkin, his conscience says that we should care for them. Why? And end of the poem, we have the answer. Because only when we love animals, we can love human beings. Because we are brothers and sisters. We are members of the same family. Animals are our brothers and sisters. I question the sky. Silkin asked the sky. He asked the stars in the sky. He asked the Milky Way, the galaxies. Why should we love the animals? Why should we care for the animals? The serene blue water. John Silkin asked the water, the oceans, the seas. Think of the animals in the water. We have a lot of animals there, not just the fish alone. And think of uh, what happens to them. They too have bitter, small eyes. So the poet is asking the sky, for it is asking the ocean, why should we care for animals? Why they are our brothers and sisters. Our love is perfect love. Our life is meaningful. Our love is meaningful only when we love animals in the sky, in the land, in the water. All right? Human beings are not the center of the earth. All creatures are equally important. Deep ecology. I question the sky, the serene blue water, the oceans, but it cannot say. Sky cannot answer. Oceans cannot answer. God has endowed human beings with the speech. And John Silkin answers. We should care for animals because they are our brothers and sisters and no answer releases in my head a procession of gray shades parched and whimpering so the point doesn't get any answer from the sky doesn't get any answer from the ocean and no answer releases in my head he doesn't get any answer the poet doesn't get any answer at all no answer come from anywhere a procession but he can see a procession a a movement of a series of animals, a procession. It's a journey, a procession of gray shades 
and this procession of gray shades is the is, is the image of the the animals past past because these animals suffer some of them are wounded some of them are hurt some of them suffer from diseases nobody cares for them shades parched and whimpering whimpering look at the birds look at the dogs look at the cats look at the animals look at the squirrel they are all whimpering what is whimpering complaining there is a complaint in each bird cry there is a complaint in each of the twittering of of, of the birds and the squirrels because their uh, surrounding is devastated the, 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 when a tree is fell, when a tree is cut, when you pollute the environment, when the atmospheric temperature is rising up, they die and they cannot survive and they whimper, complain. Dogs with clicked ears, look around, you can see the kind of atrocities human beings uh, impinge on animals. Clipped ears, right? Uh, uh, the, 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 maybe uh, it can, uh, clipped ears refers to the kind of uh, uh, buttons which are stuck on the ears of uh, animals like dogs and all. When you insure them, maybe of course you just clip it, right? Or rather, of course you just clip it, right? So dogs with clipped ears, Wheezing cart horses, wheezing, right? Wheezing because breathing with difficulty. Cart horses, horses, maybe one or two or three horse carts, like uh, we have bullock carts, right? Kalavandi, Kudravandi, all right? And we are just uh, enforcing or compelling the uh, horses to drag great weight loads of. Uh, luggage maybe loads of timber wood or anything not just horse alone donkey even dogs right in very very cold places right sledge dogs and all right so we sing cart horses a fly without shadow and without thought okay so we can see maybe these animals are tortured cruelly and a fly without shadow, without thought, right? So sometimes the, the, the fly doesn't have a shadow. It, it has no thought, right? But we understand that there is cruelty. Human beings just uh, sh sh shower cruelty upon the animals, right? Is it with these menaces to our vision, with this procession led by a man carrying wood, we must be concerned? Yes. The answer is yes, this is a rhetorical question, a figure of speech. You sit with these menaces, menaces, threats, dangers, animals are suffering. We uh, uh, are cruel to the animals. So is it with these menaces to our vision, with this procession led by a man carrying wood, we must be concerned. Yeah, we must be concerned about this procession led by a man carrying wood. That is, of course, uh, uh, we we want house, we want development, and for our development, we exploit and uh, uh, just uh, eliminate the environment. All right? So is it with these menaces to our vision, with this procession led by a man carrying wood, we must be concerned. Yes, we must be concerned about this. The holy land. The holy land, of course, refers to the promised land, Israel. Uh, the, the the Jewish people, right? They were promised the Holy Land. And Holy Land, again, refers to uh, the earth, right? That is, of course, Bhumi or earth, right? The earth is the right dwelling place of uh, uh, God. Earth is the dwelling place of human beings, right? So earth is the Holy Land. Look at Genesis in Bible. God creates everything in six days. And it is on the sixth day that God created uh, Adam and Eve. So the earth is holy because it is created by God. That is, of course, religion, see. This is what religion, see. And John Silkin says that because the, the land is holy. 
okay the the holy land the rearing green island rearing means okay the uh, the earth the earth is bringing up us the earth cares for us it's because of the watery planet the earth that we human beings live it's because of uh, the flora and fauna it is because of the kind of uh, different uh, layers in the atmosphere and it is because of land and water that the, the the land is holy and it's because of that reason john silkin called the rearing green land the earth should be kindlier than this so look at that the rearing green island should be kindlier than this this is again in fact a personification okay so uh, right uh, uh, the earth cannot be kindlier kind but uh, yeah the earth must be a human quality of being kind is attributed to the earth and it is not in fact uh, the earth is of course right uh, uh, representing human beings we are uh, part of the earth we control the earth and so we have to be kindlier we have to be more uh, kind and loving and all so the holy land the rearing green island should be kindlier than this we must be human beings must be more kind yet the animals our ghosts need tending to yes animals what are animals animals are our ghosts animals are our ghost what is a ghost a ghost is the spirit of the dead we die and our spirit our ghost continues to live we are immortal maybe we have rebirth we have life after death so yeah hindu mythology of course we have uh, yeah jivatma paramatma and uh, jivatma come from the paramatma and uh, through karmas you can have sachidananda sachidananda is becoming one with god that is paramatma uh, so whoever is not becoming one with god will have an incarnation or an avatar or a rebirth and you may be you 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 now i'm a human being after my death i can be a dog sometimes i can be a cat sometimes i can be a squirrel sometimes i wish to be a bird sometimes right so uh, it is of course uh, animals are our spirit animals are our ghosts so there may be your great grandpa in the dog that suffers in the uh, payment that small kitten crying and bleeding to death on the payment or in the highway could be the cost of your great great grandpa how can you be rude to animals be kind to them Yet the animals our ghosts need tending to need care need treat uh, treatment right okay we need to treat them we need to be kind to them we need to care for them we need to just uh, uh, cure them heal them tending to take in the whipped cat and the blinded owl people are hu very very superstitious some people are superstitious they do some black magic necromancy kurotram and they harm animals cats are often harmed because of black magic owls are hunted because of black magic certain snakes are hunted because of black magic certain frogs and chameleons are hunted lizards are hunted because of black magic even chicken are hunted because of black magic so at the animals our ghosts need tending to take in the whipped cat the beaten whipped is whip is of course uh, a stick or maybe a try a, a long stick and a thread attached to it at the end that with which you just uh, beat the animal that is whipped whip 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 is the instrument which of course uh, uh, you use when you plow the land Uh, in all days i remember people just plow the land and they use whip to beat the oxen kala putumbo kanaligale chaata kondu adikkum adikkina vadiyada attathoru kayaru kettittundavu adina nammal whip nu parayanu chaata kondu adikkya so sometimes the whipped cat taking the whipped cat and the blinded owl maybe because people practice black magic or 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 or, or uh, necromancy sometimes owls barn owl different species of owls are blinded 
Take up the man trap squirrel upon your shoulder. We trap squirrels. We hunt them. Take up them. Be love, loving to them. Be kind to them. Be good to them. Attend to the necessary bees. There are bees that suffer. Dogs, squirrels, birds, animals like horses and cats and all. Attend to the necessary bees. Take them to the veterinary hospital. Take them to the, uh, them to the vet, the doctor, the veterinary doctor. Give them some water. Now, of course, it is very, very hot and uh, birds and animals need to drink something and they don't get water. So keep maybe a, a bowl of water in the backyard or the front yard in your garden. Take up the man trap squirrel upon your shoulder. Attend to the necessary bees from growing mercy and a moderate love. Great love for the human animal occurs. So only by loving animals, only by loving creatures can we, uh, we, we can love our own kith and kin. We can, live, uh, we can love human beings, right? So from growing mercy and moderate love, great love for the human animal occurs. Same idea we have in uh, our ancient marina, the poem of Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Last line, and your love grows your great love grows and grows. Okay, so look at that. Your love grows and your great love grows and grows, 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 three times. Yeah, unending. Let our love grow. Let it be an unending, eternal flow. Let love flow from our heart. Let us love animals. Let us love creatures only then our love for humans become meaningful now we'll look at the questions and answers in caring for animals the poet questions the sky and the serene blue water in caring for animals the poet questions the sky and the serene blue water in silkin's poem dogs are seen with clipped ears in silkin's poem dogs are seen with clipped ears According to Silkin, animals are our ghosts. According to Silkin, animals are our ghosts. It's from growing mercy that great love for human animal occurs. Now we have short questions. Whom does the poet ask whether to care for animals? The poet John Silkin asks the sky and the ocean whether to care for animals. Next question, in what condition does the poet see the dogs and the horses in the street? John Silkin, the poet, sees dogs and horses in suffering. Animals are treated very, very badly and they suffer. The cats have clipped ears and the horses and donkeys and dogs have to drag, pull uh, carts. Uh, yeah, here we have uh, the reference, we sing cart horses. The horses are dragging carts, which are full of uh, heavy loads and burden, and they can just breathe. So the suffering of animals we have here, clipped Flip tears of the cats and uh, we sing horses. Why does the poet tell that the animal need caring? John Silkin, the poet sell, as it says that animals need caring because they are our ghosts. Animals are our ghosts. They are our spirit. They are the spirit of our grandparents, great-grandparents, maybe our brothers and sisters who are no more with us. So they are part of us and we are part of them. We are brothers and sisters and we must not be cruel to the animals. Now the next question, the fourth question, how can the human animal experience love? Human animal can experience love only by loving animals. Only when we love animals, uh, our love flows. Now we have uh, the paragraph question. Uh, of course, uh, the first question is, 
look uh, the structure of the poem caring for animals okay it is in fact uh, very easy question see what is the structure of the point caring for animals so you can just write a, a small introduction about john silkin the great uh, poet uh, who won a lot of uh, recognition like he won the faber memorial prize for nature with man and again he won uh, for uh, Grigory Felopsis from the University of Leeds and uh, his poems deal with uh, the Jewish identity, sense of dislocation and divide between humankind and nature. And this poem is about uh, uh, the significance of being kind to animals. And of course, uh, you just write all the important points there. I'm not repeating and wasting time. And the structure, this poem is structurally complete and uh, the a poet uses 10 stanzas of, of course, uh, the initial nine stanzas are of two lines, very, very beautifully arranged and patterned and structures. Okay, we have couplets, nine couplets. And the last, the 10th stanza is a single line stanza with uh, uh, two sentences or, uh, yeah, yeah, that is the very structure and the poem is written in very simple vocabulary, contemporary vocabulary. There isn't anything that just confuse us, no need of much reference, but because, uh, see, it is written in such a very simple structure of slender stanzas, stanzas of two lines, because if you have very, very many stanzas of uh, many lines like uh, five lined six lined seven line nine line ten lined stanzas it would be very complex now john silkin wants to convey and communicate the very significance of being nice to caring to animals in order to convey that he uses a very simple structure and he writes this poem in couplets nine couplets followed by a single line and uh, structurally the poem is perfect thematically the poem is superb and uh, of course uh, one of the best poems of uh, contemporary significance is silkin's caring for animals because uh, now we have uh, climatic changes and uh, we know that whatever harm is done to the environment is uh, uh, of course uh, boomeranging when we hurt the environment when we hurt the animal of course our life human life is also affected so we should of course uh, the, the the surrounding is very very delicate it's very fragile we need to be very very careful and uh, kind to them and uh, in order to convey that idea significant idea he uses a very simple structure and structurally it is perfect right now we come to the next question how does the poet answer his own query whether caring has to be given to animals. Yeah, uh, through all the uh, lines and ideas in this poem, uh, John Silkin is, is just uh, substantiating the fact that uh, we, we need to be caring and kind-hearted and loving to, of course, animals, because animals, according to John Silkin, are our ghosts. Ghosts, they are part of us. The animal you see in the rod, the cat, the horse, the maybe the bird, the squirrel, the rabbit, the fox, the tiger, the lion, they were all once human beings. So you must see your grandpa in them, you must see your grandma in them, you must see your brother in them, you must see your sister in them. Okay, so the poet very successfully, and he, end of the poem, he confirms, attend to the unnecessary bees from growing mercy and a moderate love. Great love for the human animal occurs, and your love grows. Now, of course, uh, they are the 
ചൂടകറ്റും ഹനിപ്പവനും കിളിപാട്ടു കാപ്പാടും പരോപകാര പ്രവണം പ്രപഞ്ചം ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് അബൌട്ട് ദി യൂണിവേഴ്സ് മലയാള പോയിട്രി ഉടൻ മലയാള പോയിട്രി എറുപ്പവനും മല ഗന്ധമേകും വെട്ടുന്നവനും തരു ചൂടകറ്റും ഹനിപ്പവനും കിളിപാട്ടു പാടും പരോപകാര പ്രവണം പ്രപഞ്ചം ബട്ട് വി ഹ്യൂമൻ ബീയിങ്സ് ആർ ക്രൂവൽ വി ആർ നോട്ട് നൈസ് ടു ദി എൻവയൺമെന്റ് വി ആർ മീൻ നോട്ട് നൈസ് ടു ദി അനിമൽസ് സോ സിൽക്കിൻ ജസ്റ്റ് കൺവെ ദ സെയിം ഐഡിയ ഹിയർ ഓക്കെ സോ വി ക്യാൻ സേ ദാറ്റ് ജോൺ സിൽക്കിൻ ഈസ് asking us rather he uh, is very very successfully uh, 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 conveying or communicating the necessity of being uh, uh, nice and uh, necessity of caring for animals now we come to the essay questions consider caring for animals as a poem of environmental justice okay so the uh, poem uh, caring for animals by john silkin is about environmental justice right it is about environmental justice why because environment is not just for human beings alone if we still continue to believe in the anthropocentric perspective okay we believe that we we we, we say that we are the center of the earth we are the center of the universe we are everything human beings are everything and all the other creatures and animals they are just secondary no this is not this is not equal right everything the plant the tree the butterfly the bee the animals right to the, the 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 rivers the hills the hillocks everything is as important as human beings so we have to give up our anthropocentric perspective and we should accept the new paradigm that is of course the new paradigm propagated by norwegian philosopher arne nes and the american environmentalist george session the philosophy of deep ecology in which human beings are just equal to the other creatures the rights of men are equal to the rights of uh, creatures and animals it is equal okay that is environmental justice when you cut a tree when you kill an animal you are against environmental justice you are violating animal right you are violating the right of plants and trees and okay so you can just write about all that this poem is very much about environmental justice and john silkin points yes cats horses birds and many other creatures are ill treated it has to end it has to end okay so love must come from the heart of every human being you should care for them next question establish that john silkin's poetry is a process of reformation and development and is relevant to social issues in the context of his poem caring for animals of course uh, this poetry or jo john silkin's poetry as a whole like uh, most of uh, the other anthologies in these anthologies uh, of uh, john silkin like the two freedoms living voices recording of the stones recording of the stones nature with man and water smeet all these poems deal with uh, environmental issues as well as uh, the human issues especially the, the the kind of atrocities to minorities and all and we can again with specific reference to this poem caring for animals we can substantiate the fact that john silkin's poetry is a process of reformation okay yeah it is in fact uh, uh, reforming Uh, like uh, the the human civilization we have to change our perspective and development right uh, so process of reformation and development and is relevant to social issues because we have a lot of problems in our society social issues like uh, cruelty towards women empower women empowerment and again cruelty towards animals animals are part of the society animals are part of uh, our family okay when you consider animals and creatures are part of our family our society okay yeah this poem is very much about social issues and we have to change our perspective okay so if we need to now we speak about women empowerment maybe maybe we are feminists in which of course they just speak about equal rights of women so 
Remember, we speak again about uh, ecofeminism. Okay, these are all the very, very um, thoughts of the day and social issues of our uh, of the contemporary world. And when we think of all these issues, of course, uh, this poetry is uh, right uh, very much about uh, uh, the, the process of uh, reformation. This poem is about uh, right, or Silkin's poetry as a whole is about. Uh, uh, a process of reformation. Okay, so with this, we come to the end of uh, the discussion of this wonderful poem by John Silkins, Caring for Animals. Please uh, just read your text, read the questions and answers, and try to understand this wonderful poem. Uh, thanks a lot for listening. May God bless you all. Bye-bye.